Autistic teen suspended and threatened with death after dropping the Quran. An autistic student in England was suspended from school and received death threats for allegedly desecrating a Quran. The incident began when the student lost a wager with friends and was told to purchase a Quran, which he bought and then brought to school and gave to another student who recited a passage while on their playground. It was also revealed that an unrelated boy knocked the Quran out of the student's hands, causing it to fall on the floor and get slightly smudged with dirt. Afterward, the autistic student picked up the Quran and placed it in his bag. Rumors quickly spread that the Quran was thrown, spat on, and burned, but an independent Muslim counselor refuted these claims. Four students were suspended and a meeting was held to discuss the incident and soothe the Muslim community. The student's mother apologized on his behalf and realized, revealed that he had been receiving numerous death threats. Humanists UK condemned the decision to suspend the students involved in the incident, saying it was quote unquote horrendous for the school to be pressured into excessive disciplinary action by a religious group. So there's like so much to unpack here. This is wild. Armin, in the um, news article, there is a uh, small video that's hosted on Twitter that I would like us to show. It's a portion of the um, uh, meeting that was held at school. It's a little bit further down. There we go. All that I hear in our community, we face an issue of safeguarding a child who is autistic. He has received a number of death threats and threats to beat him up, etc. And again, as Hafiz Mateen said, passions do flare and sometimes we let them out in the wrong manner. Now, mother has had to inform the police and say, look, my son's had X, Y and Z threats. However, to her credit, she understands the situation and has advised the police that she does not want any of these children to be prosecuted and she only asks that her son is not harmed. This is wild. So this got to the point, Armin, that the local police were called to investigate a hate incident. What the hell? Because this boy dropped and slightly smudged a Quran. I can show you a picture of the the quote unquote damaged Quran, like the, when the pages are all stacked together, you know, you see that it has a little bit of scuffing on it and there's like a tiniest tear on one corner of the cover. And there, the police were gonna get involved with these children. And there was this commentator that I've been reading in England and he was talking about like, the, when he was growing up going to Catholic school, they would like graffiti and plagiarize their own Bibles in the middle of Catholic school. Like nothing would happen to them. Like there would hardly be any disciplinary, if any, but the police are getting involved with these children. And I want to read something that was reported in the Jerusalem Post because they freaking roasted this whole situation. Um, and so they, this is, you know, there was this kind of all hands on deck meeting that was held at a local mosque to dissect this incident, right? And this is their reporting on what was talked about in that meeting. Um, how were the proportions of blame distributed? While the Imam acknowledged that it is wrong to respond to direct uh, disrespect of the Quran with threats of physical violence, he nevertheless focused much of his attention elsewhere. He spoke of how Muslims shouldn't engage in such threats because of how the non-Muslim public will respond to them, how it is wrong to disrespect the Quran and how the feelings of offended Muslims are valid and how important it is that non-Muslims understand that Muslims will never tolerate disrespect of the Quran. Quote, somehow the Muslims turn, turn into perpetuators due to the way in which we react, Imam Anwar said. Quote, the feelings that we feel are not wrong it's just the way in which we express them, which is taken negatively. And the whole table is turned and the focus from the disrespect element is shifted to the Muslims reacting negatively. That's his reaction to a what child being threatened with death for dropping his book, his own property, this child's own property. 
what is has what has been the reaction to this have people been outraged or has this been like this has been blowing up in england people are like do we have blasphemy laws here what the hell is going on this is insane like both the fact that this child is experiencing this period versus the emphasis is still on the disrespect to the quran and what was so interesting is what they talked about um is um that the only way see here's another quote from this article furthermore seemingly in order to placate the offended community both the imam and the counselor frequently highlighted the boy's autism diagnosis and they give all these quotes about how they were just fixated on the fact that this boy is autistic and then they continue in their reporting however no one present addressed the fact that most diagnostically normative 14 year old boys also do not have the best judgment regarding the appropriateness of an action. Additionally, none of the speakers addressed that a diagnosis of autism is irrelevant in a discussion about whether or not it is appropriate to bear a grudge against, much less threaten a 14 year old boy because he disrespected a holy book. Yeah. It's outrageous. It's simply outrageous. It's and this is the UK. It's this is the UK. We're not talking about an Islamic country. Yes. So this imam and this Muslim counselor, who I believe was from the Labour Party, of course. Um, and I'm a lib, and I'm like, come on, Labour Party. <laughs> um, uh, they were just, you know, doubling down, talking about how autistic this boy was. However, when the boy's mother came to speak in front of the community that was gathered in this mosque, she described him very differently. She described him as high functioning. So the only way the, this imam and counselor could soothe the community was to overemphasize this boy's diagnosis to try to like make it okay. Because otherwise, because the mom himself was saying that your feelings are completely valid, but you're expressing them the wrong way, but you're not expressing them the wrong way because it's bad to express them that way. It's bad to express it that way because of how non-Muslims will then turn it back on us. That's why it's bad. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> you said that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Am I crazy or is that like wildly out of pocket? Yeah, no issue with abusing the, the boy like that, yeah. Um, yeah, and the, the mom was just talking about how, you know, her son is so sorry and he, how he's learned how deeply disrespectful what he did was. And she said, wow. he hasn't eaten since Wednesday afternoon when this occurred because with his autism, it's put his anxiety to a level where he is beside himself. He is very, very sorry, the boy's mother said, as she sat at the edge of the panel, hair covered with a black scarf. And May, then, again, repeating how sorry her son was, she added, we have to call the police. He's absolutely petrified, and I don't want anyone to be prosecuted because of the stupidity of my son and his friends. Oh, my God. Do you think we're being too... Is it expecting too much for the mom to go, like, just fuck you all like you guys like abusing my son instead of like apologizing shouldn't she just be like roasting them all she like, should but she's i think she's scared yeah like i think so like really? maybe we i mean i i would want her to be like what the hell like i want her to go like raging on all these people like you guys are abusing my son for nothing for pieces of paper but again i don't think we're in a position to judge her because she's living with those people and she, she wants, wants to protect she, her I, son. Yeah. She wants to protect her vulnerable child. Regardless of his yeah. medical diagnosis, he's a child and he's vulnerable in this position. You know what should happen? We need a proper Quran burning reaction. Whenever people, whenever, whenever Muslims, you know, some Muslims, some Muslim mm -hmm. act like this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, our Quran has been disrespected. I think we need to be like, oh, you think that was disrespectful? Let's have a proper Quran burning ceremony. What, or what like, do you maybe mean by that? What, what does that mean? <laughs> like, I, I want, like, I want people in the UK to be like, okay, okay, you guys thought that was bad. Let's have celebrate us disrespecting Quran in many different ways. Okay, you know, burn, put burning aside because burning could be dangerous. 
But like, what happened to this Quran? They threw it was if it, it was thrown to the ground. Okay, go it was go. Knocked out of someone's no, hand. It was knocked out of someone. Okay, not even so. Not go play. Even thrown. I want. I want. I people of UK, go take buy Qurans and throw them. Go to parks and throw them. Okay, throw them into the river. Play catch with them. Throw them in like the mud. You know, walk on them. Whatever record it and just go crazy with it okay i want you know this is the only way we could normalize these things you saw we we had really harsh reactions by um, people within the muslim community hashtag not all um and in response they created the annual dry muhammad day okay when sorry um, in response to the harsh reactions that muslims had to drawing um, cartoons of muhammad and now it's not that big of a deal. It worked. It worked, okay? So you need to do the same thing with the Quran. We need to desensitize. This actually helps the Muslim community. We need to desensitize the Muslim community. So when you see reactions like this, in response, you need to do it 10,000 times more so they see that this type of intimidation tactics don't work. When they try to intimidate somebody, it needs to backfire on them so that they don't use it. Because if you submit, they see that it works, and then they're going to do it more. So I know we can't expect that from this mom and child to go disrespect yeah. the Quran because that's a lot of risk for them. And there be Muslims as well, so they don't want to do it. But that's not the same with you. You guys could be like, oh, people are angry that somebody disrespected the Quran. Well, how do you like them apples now? Record it. Put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter, have a hashtag for this news, and make it go viral. Start this campaign. What do you like? I don't understand, people. You've already done it Start before. What was it that you did? Hashtag was it hashtag desecrate the Quran? Yes, hashtag desecrate. We already have the hashtag. You don't even have to. We I made it for did you. The work for you. You're I already you. made the hashtag for you. Hashtag desecrate the Quran. People of UK, make it happen. I will look for your tweets on Twitter with the hashtag the secret Quran and I will retweet it. Just make it tasteful. I don't want to see anything gross, okay? Not don't you don't have to be disgusting and vile. Make it tasteful. Make it something that doesn't seem to be have to be offensive. You're doing something that doesn't seem to be something, you know, if you go out of your way and try to make it extra offensive, it's not going to come off as like, ew, like what's happening, okay? Make it something that normal people will look at it and like, that doesn't seem so bad. And then you only have to be, you know, have the Muslim virus in your brain for you to be like, oh yeah, that's offensive. You know, you just, you, you just have to show people the more subtle it is, the more you could show the point that, okay, look at these people are being offended by something that is not offensive. If you go, if you overdo it, then it's going to not, not going to look very good. Okay. So go do something subtle. Go be like, you know, you don't have to be like, ah, I hate the Quran. Okay. Just take a Quran and be like, oops, and just make it fall. Okay. And then record it. Oh no, what happened? What happened? Oopsie, oopsie. Oh, I stepped on it. Oopsie. Okay, just do something like that. Something subtle. And then record it. Hashtag the secret to Quran. Okay? Come on. Make it happen. Please. Look. Okay. No, you spelled it wrong. So very important uh, asterisks on doing something like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Always consider your safety. We always consider yes. the people to be responsible for their own safety. Please consider the law in your country because this is highly illegal and or punishable by death in many countries. Oh so yeah, I'm thinking UK. Consider your safety first. Do not rush into that anything. Deeply consider the consequences. Yes. I got so worked up over the beheading of Samuel Paty. I started doing it on live stream the next week. I was like, screw it. If, may, if someone's being beheaded in the middle of freaking Paris over this, I'm gonna do this live. But I did that recognizing the consequences in my life, you know? <laughs> Right, right. By the way, we do have two members. Prometheus became a member. Okay, that's welcome great. Welcome to Saints Minions. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. And Danish. Danish also oh, became Danish a YouTube member. Welcome. Danish and Prometheus from uh, Elysium and Planet Earth. Okay, so. Wait, there was something else I wanted to say about the Quran desecrating. Oh, yeah, by the way, when Armin says about doing it tastefully, like, please... Please consider that because I've not talked to you about this, Armin. People have sent me DMs 
of them like with their punanis just on the Quran, the eggplant just on the Quran. I'm talking sexual fluids on the Quran, scribbled, sent straight to my inbox. Please do not do that. I will block you immediately. I don't care if you're an ex-Muslim and we have we're on the same level in that case. That's disgusting. I did not ask to be sent that. Don't do it. That's a violation. <laughs> don't like stop. It was so gross. And then they're like, contact me through another account. They're like, why did you block me? I'm like, I didn't ask to see what you produce. You sent me like, dick pics and you're asking me why you blocked me? What the hell? I'm surprised you didn't report them. Like you just, okay, well. Wild. This, this is the job hazards of what I do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, I was just being blasphemous. I thought you would like it. Yeah. Literally though. Literally though. That's what they were saying. Yeah. Like, didn't you ask me to be blasphemous? Like, yeah, not like that. Um you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary. Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.